Hey guys, hope you guys are having a great day today. Today we're going to be learning how to build a promise from scratch in JavaScript. Now this is one of the more tougher questions that are generally asked, but I'm going to try my best to sort of simplify the approach of building a promise, take it step by step, and hopefully make it a lot clearer for other people to be able to build promises themselves and solve this question. I also created a website called friendlylead.com that has over 75 different JavaScript questions asked by top tech companies and also about 15 plus system design interview questions. So if you're interested in that check out the link below the website's called friendly.com with that let's get started so let's start off with this example and take a look at the anatomy of a promise so what is a promise so a promise is just a guarantee that some sort of function is going to execute and in time it's either going to resolve something or reject something and when i say resolve something i mean it's going to give us a value back that we're expecting or if some sort of error happens, it's going to fail and reject and give us that rejection value. So I, I created this very simple example here. Um, I'm just going to clear the console. It's called promise A that takes in one simple argument called A. And if A is equal to 1, then it just rejects itself. If a is not equal to one, then it returns a plus a. So it just adds itself. And this is wrapped inside of a set timeout. Uh, and this is mainly because I wanted to sort of try to mimic a real API call. So if I run this, it takes about a second, but we error out because our promise a is actually calling one. So that's good. So let's change that to two. We run it. And now we should get four. So a plus a, two plus two equals to four. So that is the general way to return a promise within a function. Now let's take a look at how we're chaining these methods. So a promise, which has a then method, and then also has a catch method. The then method returns a response, and that response should resolve whatever we called in our resolver. And the same thing with the reject, the error should call whatever we called with, within our rejection. So let's build this out. I'm going to change this to say my promise now. And let's build this class. So class, my promise, which will take in a constructor. Now, the constructor, when you are creating a promise, immediately the first thing we do here is we are taking in an execution function, some sort of callback, something that is executed right away. And inside of this callback, we have two arguments. We have a resolve and reject. So let's build this out. So we'll call this execute function. And then this function, we're going to wrap this behind a try catch. So we'll say execute function. And then what we're going to say is first argument returns us a value. And then we'll just simply call this dot resolve val. And same thing with the second argument returns a val. But we'll, this time we'll say this dot reject val and now we're going to have to think of our catch statement catch returns an error and we simply will just say this dot reject error now let's build out this resolve and reject so we'll say resolve takes in one value as the first argument same thing with re reject takes in one value as the argument now we want to keep track of the value and some states here as well. So let's start first by just defining value itself. So we'll just say val equals to null by default. In fact, it's probably better to just put this inside of the constructor itself. So we'll say this dot val equals to null. And then we also want to keep track of state because a promise can have three different states. It can have a pending state, it can have a, succeed, a successful state, and it can have a rejected state. So we'll say this dot state equals to state dot pending. And we'll get to what state dot pending is in a second. The other two things we really need are uh, callbacks. So if you're chaining promises, we want to be keeping track of every single callback that's being called and executed before. So we'll say this dot success callbacks equals to an empty array and then the same thing with failed callbacks which is also equal to an empty array next we want to update our all these different values here so we'll say on resolve and on reject we pretty much do something similar 
So on resolve, we'll say this dot value equals to val. This dot state. Now the state is not pending anymore. The state is succeeded. Um, and then we don't want to worry about the fill callbacks on resolve because it's successful. So instead of just giving it an empty value here, what we want to do is we just want to iterate through it. So we don't want to say for all success callbacks, get the callback and then execute it. Something like this. And actually we want to do the same exact thing for reject, but the state should be rejected. And then we want to call the failed callbacks. Now let's define the state. We can define that as an enum. So we'll say const state equals to an object. The first is pending, which is just equal to pending. The second is success, which is equal to success. And the last is failed, which is equal to failed. Alrighty. So now we have our state defined. We also defined our resolve and our reject. Now the only two methods that's left to be defined is the then function and the catch function. So the then function is kind of the most complicated part here. So I'll leave that for a second. The catch function is a lot easier. So let's take a look at what the catch currently looks like. So, so the catch function executes a function itself, right? So we'll say on reject. We wanna return this dot then. And then the first will be a null because we're not we're not resolving anything. And then we simply just pass on reject here. Now, now for the then method, it takes two arguments. It takes on resolve and on reject. And keep in mind, both of these are optional arguments, so they can be null. So this needs to return a new instance of my promise. And remember, we have to pass our uh, executor function in here which takes a resolve and reject. And finally, the callback. So in here, first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a switch statement and we wanna switch through our state. So we'll say state, uh, this dot state, and we'll have three cases here. So we'll say case state is impending then we do stuff here. I'll just break it for now. The second case is the state dot success. I'll also break this as well. The third is state dot rejected. And lastly, just to be safe, if there's um, some strange state that occurs, we can just say throw new error state not defined. Cool. So now we can worry about what to do in each individual state. So they all kind of work very similarly. They all will be calling this um, success caller or failed caller. So if you're in this state success, you simply just call this function called success caller. And if you're in the rejected, you say failed caller, and we'll build these in a second. And if you're in pending, you simply just say this dot success callbacks dot push success callback. Oh, caller, sorry. And the same thing with the, the failed caller. So I'll just copy and paste this. So we'll say we want to push the failed caller and it's called failed callbacks. Cool. So that takes care of our switch statement. And last, we just need to build out the success caller and the failed caller. So let's build a success caller, const success caller, which is a arrow function. And the main reason we want to build an arrow function here is because we are going to be referencing the this context for our class. So we want to say if on resolve is not defined, then we simply just re resolve this dot val. Now, if on resolve is defined, then we say try and we'll say let val equals to on resolve this dot val. And then we'll say resolve on resolve. 
And if there's an error, we'll say catch error. We'll just simply reject it. Reject error. And we want to do the same exact thing for the failed caller. I'll just copy and paste it. But instead of checking for on resolve here, we check for on reject. And then if it if it doesn't exist, we reject it. Um, and then on uh, the try catch statement will will be very similar. So we'll say if val is on reject uh, on resolve, we resolve it and so forth. So that is pretty much it. Now let's try running this. Cool. Our promise worked as ex expected as before. It's calling our custom promise class. We're passing a into it, which is defined as two. Two is not equal to one, so we don't reject anything, and we simply resolve it. Now let's update it to instead of saying two, let's make sure that our, our error state is working by passing in one. And now this should fail. And it looks like it didn't fail. I think the problem here is we want to not on resolve, we want to say on reject here on the failed caller. And then we want to resolve it. So let's write running this again. Cool. There we go. That was one error that we took care of. So we want to just make sure we called on reject here rather than calling on resolve. And we've just built our promise class from scratch. If you found this video helpful, please press the like button below and consider subscribing. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks.